Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. I was going to ask you if you had a little patch, but I won't now. I won't. <laughs> oh, you know what? I've, I've got, I've, I'm looking out at my immaculate wow. area. It, it's actually artificial. Hello, darlings. Welcome. I'm sorry, I'm British. I have to bring up the weather. Oh. The weather? What's going on? WTF. What's going on? I don't know. I'm all ready to plant stuff out, and everyone says you can't plant to the end of the frost, so I'm waiting for that to end. But in Edinburgh, this weekend just mm. gone, um, I did four seasons in one day. I was actually sat outside a bar <laughs> in the grass market in Edinburgh with my straps down so I wouldn't get marks, with my sunglasses on, giving it large. <laughs> Next minute, I was looking for a thermal vest. I know. In one day, it was Hills. Hills, can I just ask you, you said something, plant stuff out. I don't know what you're talking about. What's oh, that? Oh, you like gardening and you do oh, stuff. Oh, no, well, exactly. I'm going to hurry, it is fine. I'm potting yours up and bringing them over. Thank you. Sorry, I I know, Sam, are you into gardening? No, you know, yes and no. So I have, <laughs> we've, got like a, we've got a communal terrace here and one of the residents, um, he kind of tends to it and it's beautiful. We've got a lemon tree, we've got a fig tree and it's kind of in the city and it's, it's nice. But I wouldn't be able, I don't think I would be able to maintain it. I kill everything that's in my house. I've got, a little, <laughs> I've got an orchid here. Yeah. And the thing is, the thing is, when, it, when all the flowers, fall off then I think it looks ugly then I just don't want it anymore I'm like oh no, no, stay with back. it stay with it's it back. Really? Yeah. I know yeah. but in the meantime what do you do to get it a cupboard I don't want that out no no just put it out the way somewhere you don't really okay. need to look at it bed. <laughs> no it needs some light a little bit of light <laughs> Probably why, yeah. Um, but I appreciate nature. I am a nature girl, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's worth it. When you plant the bulbs in October and November and it's freezing and you go, oh, why, why am I bothered? I can't, you know, I'm freezing cold. Just get inside and have a cup of tea. When I look out now and all the pots are out with the tulips and the daffodils and everything coming up, so worth yeah. it. So yeah. When I was a little girl in Sunderland, I remember because we had a sort of like a little strip you know, of, of sort of grass. And I remember thinking, oh, I'd like to plant something. You know, when you're little and you buy these seeds and I planted these hollyhocks, hollyhock seeds. Yeah. And three years later, I was still waiting every day. Oh, oh. oh. nothing happened. Nothing happened. So not your thing then, clearly. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Now I'm all right with orchids because I just leave them. They don't need any water. They don't need anything occasionally now and then. <laughs> yeah. and I like my little sort of, I've got a small garden and that's perfect. And I love it when other people give me things like, yes. you know, plants and I put them outside, but no, just not into no. it. It's really, really interesting. You're, you're the same, Harriet. You just like yeah. it to look pretty. I love it to look pretty, but it's not my thing. No, no, no. I think oh, pots, are, pot, pots are my thing now. I've decided that if I move from here, I've got a huge garden. It's too much for me now. And my next move will be somewhere where pots and terraces will be the thing. And I don't yeah. want to I don't want a lawnmower and all that. No, we do. I love a kind of courtyardy thing with pots yeah. and things. That to me is, you know, social Absolutely. and not too much, you know, hefty work. Absolutely. So yeah. my little patch of grass that I've got in this garden, and I have it because of the dogs, you see, just in case they want to wee. And Quick I don't know, uh, yes, which they do. Uh, and I don't know what to do, if I should grass it or if, uh, you know, make it better with better grass. Or I don't really want to cobble it or do something like that with it. I, I don't know why. I just, I always like a little bit of grass somewhere. Yes, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's good to have a little patch. You can get the lawn I knew, now. I knew you were thinking that, Hilary. I, yeah. you know, I knew where she was going. I could just, yeah. she was in hysterics and I thought I'd just say all I like is a little patch I don't like it to be completely <laughs> a landing strip don't you thank mean? You. A landing strip. there we way. go thank you and moving on please <laughs> can we bring in our guest oh, we yeah. have we have as our guest today on Friday it is Friday isn't it I don't even know what, yes. what year yeah. it is um, the wonderful Susie Amy welcome to our nest hello hi, hi Susie hi, hi. Happy We're Friday! <laughs> <laughs> Just changing so, the view of you all here, so I can see you properly. There we go, that's perfect. Right. So, so Susie, uh, welcome to, 
to our nest, as we've just said. It's lovely, lovely to see you. We were just, we were having a very rude conversation that shouldn't have been rude. We were just talking about little strips of grass and you can imagine where it went. Hedge so we're not gonna talk about we that went, now. We went to hedge trimmers, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. it, it Needed. Was, it was ridiculous. And I was going to ask you if you had a little patch, but I won't now. I won't. <laughs> Ooh, no. You know what? I've, I've got, I've, I'm looking out at my immaculate wow. area. 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 Oh, well, I'm glad you're groomed, darling. I'm glad you're Very groomed. groomed. It, it's actually artificial. So it's all. Oh, oh does, it, does it smell? Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we we haven't gone through please. summer yet. So we'll find out when the weather gets a bit warmer. Can I tell you, I have some, in quotes, artificial, and there's a special uh, healthy spray that you can spray on the artificial for everything to drain oh, through. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, we'll I want to say mind. the words top dog turf, but don't stop. <laughs> I'll stick with my full bush. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Okay, anyway, moving Susan, on. Can we get back on track, please? Susie, welcome to our show. You've had the most wonderful career. In fact, we actually worked together in Footballers' Wives, I think. I was in a, a couple of episodes, 5,875 years ago. God, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Can you believe that show was now 20 years ago? Wow. Oh, I mean, that, that is so scary. I was 20 at the time and I'm now 40. And, you know, it, it really sticks in people's minds. I think that it's one of those shows that was really special in that era because I think it brought some glamour back to yeah. TV mm -hmm. and, and TV at the time was a bit grey. So I think people remember it very fondly because it kind of kicked off the whole glamour on TV again and whether people want to thank Footballers Wives for it or not, it then spurred on the <laughs> Towies, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, weird, people definitely. were so enjoying that glamorous sort of vibe back on TV. So it was a really special show. But yes, it was a long time ago that we worked together on it. <laughs> Was and, and Julie Telforth as well with the, the wonderful scene on the snooker table. Absolutely adore that woman. <laughs> what an absolute legend she Everybody is. Everybody is going to be going straight to YouTube. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> I, I think it's. I mean, considering yeah, that. Wonderful. Yeah, it's. It's. It was just. It's just an, an amazing scene. But anyway, Susie, um, apart from your fantastic acting career, which you've had, what have you done since um, Footballers' Wives? Well, I mean, that was 20 years ago. So yeah, I know. But... basically everything, because that was my <laughs> that was my first major job. So everything wow. from theatre to film. I'm currently doing <clears throat> Fatal Attraction, which is touring oh, yes. in the UK. Um, just really everything's just been really varied since then. Um, I love doing a little bit of everything. And to be honest, when I had two babies quite recently, I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and I really missed that whole experience of being on stage. And I actually wondered if it might never happen again, because I had the babies and then the pandemic. And I thought, how could I ever commit to hours like that with children of this age? And funnily enough, this job came up and we've managed to make it work and I feel so grateful. Um, I'm working with some amazing people. Louise Redknapp has joined us recently. She's an incredible woman. You must get her on here one day. She's, yeah. she's very funny and just a very nice woman. And um, Kim Marsh was with us initially and she's left. And we've got this really great team of people and it wasn't mm. a horribly long job. It was five months in total. And my partners really helped support me in terms of around the children and I'm doing it and I just feel really happy. It's a yeah, because then you've got the best of both worlds. You know, see, when my kids were growing up, it was exactly the same. You kind of just juggle. You don't realise until you've done it, how the hell did you do it? Yeah, but absolutely. you do it. And, and also, you know, with your career working all the time, you've managed to become an ambassador to a skincare range. How on earth did you manage to fit that well, in? Well, that, that, that was an interesting one. I found, um, it's called Arc Skincare, and I started talking about them. 2012, I first tried this range, and what I liked about them, I had no association with them, by the way, and what I liked about them was they were British, they were small, the products really worked, and I, I, I know quite a lot about skincare, and every single drop in these products is necessary. Nothing's a filler. It's not padded out with unnecessary water or scents or anything like that, and so I began talking about them everywhere in press articles. I'd mentioned them, and I made quite a big difference to them. Um, you know, they are still a small company, but they were a small company then. So years later, there was a bit of a brand shift in terms of who was running the company. And they looked back and thought, who genuinely likes our products? And it was me. I was <laughs> the person out there kind of flying this flag for them um, and buying the products. And there was one product that they still do called the hydrating serum. And weirdly, I don't use it as much now. I've got other favorites, but I couldn't stop talking about this hydrating serum. <laughs> 
So they asked me if I would be their ambassador. So I only do, you know, I, I don't work for ARC officially or anything. I can always talk about any skincare or products that I want to, but I've been supporting them over the last few years. And I've just got a really close relationship with them because I genuinely love their stuff. And I really like them. They're a, they're a small British brand and they have all the qualities I look for in skincare. Can you I'm tell me, well. as a mature uh, lady, um, why this amazing uh, list of products um, helps the mature skin? What's the difference? How does it help? Do you know what's really interesting? So basically, there are three age categories that the ARC products fall into, and then there are products that everybody can use. Right. So there, um, the, the, there's teens and twenties, <clears throat> and they're the orange ones that protect. And then there's the ones that I use that are thirties to forties, which is the defend. And then 50s and above, which is the Define. Now, to start as basic products for a moisturiser and a cleanser, <laughs> those are the products you should be buying depending on your age. Um, the reason being, at different points in our life, our skin needs different things. When I was a teenager, and I've, I've been skincare obsessed since I was early teens, <laughs> I spent all of my money buying <clears throat> really inappropriate anti-aging products for my skin. <laughs> And what Lutter. that does is that overstimulates <laughs> the skin so that the skin cannot process the amount of um, collagen and heavy ingredients mm. you're putting on teenage skin that doesn't require it. Yeah. I luckily didn't develop rosacea, etc. But you can develop <laughs> really quite serious long term skin problems due to doing that. Equally, if you are in your 50s and you're using products that, let's say you had breakouts. So you think, oh, I'm going to rush to Boots and buy some Clearasil. Sorry for mentioning mm. actual products here. That's sure all right. Them, but <laughs> that doesn't, that isn't going to work for your, your, your skin type. Spots can happen because of any sort of imbalance on the skin. So <clears throat> as a basic, the way art works is buy the cleanser and moisturizer for, for, for your age range. And then on top of that, let's say I had rosacea and Samantha has, you know, very dry skin we, we could use different different drops of the serums alongside our age products yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so so don't overstimulate your skin if you're if you're you know a teenager and don't under give your skin what it needs if you're 60 years old it's really important just to deliver it makes skin. so much sense you see yeah, because nobody, yeah. nobody has i don't think anyone's got a skincare range that they say this is for this age this is for that age i mean you know you see all these you know l'oreal stuff and thing on, on tv with you know because i'm worth it but you know it, it, there's too much stuff out there and i think the lovely thing about these products is the fact that you know you think okay i'm going to try this for my age group and i'll buy that for my daughter for her age group so it makes more sense to me mm. it, it, it does to me too do you know what arc actually sent me a box of my favorites i want to see what they actually packed i didn't <laughs> So just, I'm just ripping into this for a minute just to see. Now, here's a product that I think everybody should use every day. Since I was 14 years old, I haven't used this product since I was 14, but, <laughs> but no matter what age you are, an SPF every day yeah. for me is essential. The reason being, it, even in the winter, if you are being hit by light, those are UVA rays. It doesn't need to be hot for UVA rays to be present. And the A, think of the A as aging. They are the ones that age the skin. And this, <laughs> I have been using for years, um, Arcs Skin Protector SPF 30 Primer. Now, this is a product I would recommend for absolutely everybody. Um, every day, tiny bit on your skin. You can put it in place of your moisturizer. So um, even if you're not using Arc, use an SPF yeah. every day. A bit of rice. Them all up, darling. I agree. Like... <laughs> I've got all of them. So I was pleasantly surprised when I had the huge parcel arrive. <laughs> um, and I divulged and I, I kind of was like, oh my goodness, it's Christmas, come early. <laughs> um, but what's important? So I've been lathering this cleanser all over my face on the weekend. It had a monstrous period. So it was really nice to have something that smelt nice and, and worked. Um, but for me, I made a commitment this year. And you ladies all know that I like to talk about my pussies, my pussy cats. Bruno and Lola and how they you know saved me from a very very dark time and I've always been an animal enthusiast and I kind of during lockdown and, and, and in recent months been looking at products that are vegan and cruelty free because I wanted to make a commitment with my makeup and the products that I'm using to just be a bit more conscientious more sustainable you know I've gone to period pad uh, trousers now you know instead of pads and 
And I'm really, really, really struggling when it comes to makeup and brands. And luckily, ARC are um, vegan and cruelty free. However, in my little, you know, investigation, a lot of brands can say that they're vegan and cruelty free when, when maybe they're not. So why is it important? What, what tips would you have for people? Why is it important you know to look out I, for this? I would be surprised if any brand could say that they're vegan when they're not. I think well, well, so basically, that, if, they, that horrifies me yeah, if they still sell to China, China legally, if you anything that goes in or out of China needs to be tested on animals. So that's that's the kind of loophole. I was and that's just about to, to make that exact point, by the way. Yeah. But I don't think, do you, do you know what? I, I think that would be a horrifying <laughs> thought that a yeah. product range could say they're vegan and then be selling in China. Oh, you are absolutely right. Any brand at all, <laughs> makeup, hair or skin uh, that, that retails in China has to, by Chinese law, go through animal testing procedures. And that is unacceptable. A few awesome. years ago, the, uh, there was a conversation from a company in China that tried to sell ARC in China, and Tamsin, our CEO, said absolutely not, but she wouldn't entertain okay. it for a second. She's a, a, an animal lover to, to, to an extreme, and mm -hmm. it was just absolutely no way. So you're right. Yeah. Anyone who is looking to keep cruelty-free, check if the product range that you are buying sells in China, because if it does, they are not cruelty-free. That is a top not. tip, isn't it? It really, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it, it opened it opened my eyes so it's really nice to because i was a little bit like before i realized that they were of course vegan and cruelty free i was like oh do i have to return these but no i don't <laughs> <laughs> they are. do you know what even for people who aren't um vegan and um, i'm not vegan and I, I i've done the odd month here and there and we've got a man working on our team at arc and the, the, these products by the way are gender free can be used by anyone and um he he's vegan and it was really important to him that the range was vegan but i just want to stress that just because the range is vegan yeah. people can be not vegan and still not want to put animal products on their skin and cool. face yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm so it's, yeah it's really appealing to me either way yeah. that their products aren't laden with you know animal products etc so I, I i'm thrilled that they're vegan i really am i can't wait to try them amy i'm i was sadly away at the weekend not sadly i had a great weekend <laughs> well, okay. um, Start again. <laughs> No, my, uh, my card came through the door from the postman saying try to deliver a parcel. So I'm going to be very excited to concentrate on that and then put it out on social media. And the yeah. girls have said they're just gorgeous products. But mm -hmm. you, um, you're correct. You look amazing, by the way. You know when you drop that mm -hmm. bombshell of, oh, that was 20 years in the go. Oh, yeah. You look like you've just walked off the set of the show that you did 20 years yeah. ago. And oh, right. it, was so a, cool. it was a gorgeous time of escape and glamour and taking it up to a level that we hadn't really experienced before. So thank you for your iconic role. Chardonnay was just iconic. Oh, You've you. done loads of stuff, but I saw that you had had serious training for a film role, La Femme Musketeer that you did. And I just think that you are Lara Croft. I really do. Yeah. It said that you had to train in martial arts, you did horse riding, you did fencing. Was that just an, is that just a part of who you are? Are you an active girl in real life? Are you, do you take challenges on? I, I, I am active, but I'm not naturally active. So I, <laughs> I go to Barry's boot camp to work out and I try and go to the gym and I do some weights and I'm right. generally pretty active. But I don't have great coordination. And I remember the day I went to audition for La Femme Musketeer. I, I was filming Footballers Wives, weirdly, at the time. Right. And they had to fit me in on the on the boys' days. So they had a day where they were auditioning loads of girls and everyone was fencing in this room. And I had never done any of that before. And I did this. I, and, and because I was working at the time, I hadn't necessarily given it the same effort I would have as an unemployed actor, which obviously right. I usually am. Yeah. Most actors are usually unemployed. Um, and so I rushed <laughs> in, I found it was quite ballsy. And I got the part, and then I did have to train. So we were yeah. flown out to Croatia. It was American, the, the mini series, but filming in Croatia. And, and I really did learn everything. But the one thing I still wasn't great at was the standard of horse riding they needed. So right. I had two stunt doubles, and they used to film me bits on the horse, but I would often end up screaming. No helmets because of the, the period that it was filmed in. Oh. And you, you know, your Croatian horse is just taking off <laughs> through, through, the, through the trees. And they did have to film a few bits of me on the back of a trailer, which was pretty embarrassing. Oh, yeah. They were like, we have to look like she's galloping. So I was in the, almost in the back of a car. Sure. And they were like, <laughs> you just couldn't see the horse. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it was great. That was, that was probably my favourite job I've ever done. 
Are you that type of person that would say, yeah, I'll jump out of a plane, no problem. I'll skydive, whatever. Are you that type? Yes, but not, not for fun. If no, I have to do it, let's say I did, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. You know, they fly you up and then you all have to dive out there. Yeah. Absolutely, like no problem. But would I go on holiday and choose to go and pay to do it? No. Gotcha, no. Gotcha, right, okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be terif- I'd be terrified to do that. I, I really would. I wouldn't do anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a real <laughs> wuss. No, I'm a real wuss. It really, it would, it would absolutely terrify me. I'd, I'd rather just not do, not do anything than, than do something like that. And it, it's, and I'm always surprised by the people that do do it because I think how, you know, how on earth are they that brave to, to go up and oh, I mean, I once went in a helicopter by accident. I was filming an episode of Cat's Eyes four four thousand years ago, probably before you were born, dear. <laughs> and um, we we would uh, we had uh, there was a helicopter that came down. I had to get into it, and I thought they would just you know literally. That would be it. But the helicopter took off and it, and it frightened me, really frightened me because it, it took off in a straight line. I thought if it was going to take off, it would take off like a plane. Oh, but right. it just okay. went me. straight up. And it was like, oh my God. That's just stomach helicopter. on the ground. <laughs> oh, no, I'm scared too of that these days. I, I also feel like becoming a parent has made me even more nervous. Yes. Yes. You know what I think? I think that thing is that we have this fear and I used to be frightened of flying when I was younger. And then I thought, why would it be me? I'm not that important. Maybe just be present and enjoy the moment. Oh, and the, that why not? Attitude. That's a better choice than the fear, which is a go-to. But I think I, I'm not frightened by things. I'll just say yes, because why you. not? But Susie, I want to know what's happening for you now. What's coming up? Well, I'm, I'm still doing Fatal Attraction for, uh, for, for the next few weeks. Now I'm going back yeah. into Hollyoaks. Um, oh, I'm revisiting a character that I played a few years ago uh, called Scarlet. And I, I, I'm only going in back in for a couple of episodes initially, but I've got a character that can kind of come in and out a little bit. And there's a story <laughs> that they, they want me to go in and do. So that will be really fun. And then after that, I'm planning to spend some time at home with the girls. Unless something <laughs> massively appealing came up, I feel like this current job I'm doing has taken me away for a little bit too yeah. long. And yeah. I just want to check in and just spend some proper time here Absolutely. I think I was thinking okay. about what you were saying earlier about being a working mother and I think it's very important that we are able to do that with no shame yeah. and no guilt because I think a my mother always worked and it was always an example to me and also it gives everybody else some other sort of wherewithal of how to evolve themselves as kids as well and I think it's important to be fulfilled as you mm. just because we're a mother we don't say to men oh you're a father now can you not work anymore <laughs> we we just you know it's right, they right. have that privilege and I think we should be allowed to I think I'm a better mother because I worked as well and I took time off and as we said earlier I had time off hashtag unemployed but <laughs> yeah. all of that is fine and it's about a balance mm. to be the real true you and honour who you are on every level, as well as loving and mothering. Because I think the two can work together. It's nuts and it's plate spinning crazy, cray cray time. And up at five making a, you know, a lunchbox and all that for school. But actually it's wonderful that you can work and be a wonderful mother because you deserve to, and we all have that right. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I was the, my mother worked as well, and I was the same. I work, you know, I literally did a voiceover. Talia was born on Friday, and I went back to do a voiceover on Monday yeah, morning. Exactly. So, um, you know, so so that's it. But but I've always felt that I adored my mother because she was a working mother, and when I saw her, it was amazing. And my daughter, my daughter's got uh, two little boys, and she's just about she's just uh, announced that she's having another one, another yeah. baby. What? She's twenty Thank weeks, you. but she's worked she's worked all the way through. You yeah. know, and so that the, and she'll work, up, you know, afterwards because that's who that's we are. True. Yeah, you can't. You know, if you want, I, I have huge respect for people who want to be stay-at-home mums. I don't think I, I think I've been the worst stay-at-home mum you can imagine. A, I can't cook. B, I can't clean. I can't do the garden. I can't do it. My kids would would have well, you know, grown up. I don't know, dirty and uh, unfair. <laughs> It is dreadful. I'm, I'm not particularly good at any of the household chores either. My partner's a much better cook than me. But then exactly, that's it, That's what's wonderful. We don't have to be defined anymore no, as one thing or another, or good or bad, if we can or can't do something. Absolutely. We're all allowed to be who we are. And I think to, to do what you're doing and have young children is an example to everyone. Yeah, definitely. We can, we do and we can do it all thank and you're doing you it. So thank really you. Nice. I applaud thank you all. Um, Susie, where, how long's the tour on for? 
Uh, we, we've been going since January and we're going to the middle of May. So right. another, I think we've got another six weeks. Um, roughly, roughly places, can you sling out the towns? Yes, from Glasgow, which I can't wait for. We're yes. going to York, Aylesbury, um, Cambridge. No, so no we're problem. still dotted around, but in the top of my <laughs> Instagram, there's a link to, uh, to to venues we're going Perfect. to. We would love to see anyone come along. Absolutely. Well, hopefully Absolutely. we'll get to see you. And you've been a fantastic guest, Susie. Thank you so yeah. much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you're great. Thank you for the lovely, thank you for the lovely product. Oh, you're so you. I'm so happy you enjoyed them. I really am. Yeah. See you all soon. Bye, Susie. Good luck. Bye. Good Bye. Thank you so much. What Bye. an inspiration. What oh. a wonderful woman. I mean, two babies, literally babies, and going out there and being... One and three. Did she say one and three? One and three, I think, yeah. Oh, my God. I know. Amazing. Um, Hashtag no sleep. Hashtag no sleep ever. And when you come back from from working, you know, and you're tired, and then you're literally, you're back for half an hour, and then you're up at four o'clock in the morning, and you say, oh, my... No rest. Working working was resting for me. At least I could go to the lavatory on my own, you know, without having a little face stare at me, you know. (laughs) That you still can't tell you, Harriet. If it's no, not just, one of the children, it's probably me. I come with you. Okay. <laughs> <We're out. laughs> anyway, oh, Sam and Hills, you have been so, fantastic oh. uh, co hosts today. We, we loved having you, really do. Um, and hopefully, Sherry and uh, Dee, sorry, <laughs> she, can't <laughs> even remember them. she cannot even remember their names. I don't know what she's done with them. Oh my goodness. I'll be, I, it's all right. I'll, I can fill in whenever you want, my darlings. Oh, You're amazing. That. Great and, to and meet you, well. Sam, as well. Nice really good you. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Orchid lady. We can yeah. we can we can bond over our orchid orchids. We can just give them time. <laughs> and also and I actually hope no. we can all get together soon in real life. It would yeah, be so nice amazing. to have a, a real face to face, wouldn't it? It would be special. We need to do your um the Wonder Birds live again in the theatre oh, girls. Hills, uh, just before we go, darling, we haven't heard what's happening with you. Oh, oh. <clears throat> a beautifully busy time, thanks for asking, with O'Neill Management, which is my um, entertainment management company, really. <clears throat> all my acts are working, which is a thrill. So I've got the Crazy Comedy Company all working all over the Butlins uh, season. Yeah. I've got Max Fulham, who I've just been up to visit in Edinburgh, who was appearing with the incredible Scottish um, entertainer Alan Stewart for a week's oh, variety. Oh my goodness, it was insane. Um, I've got, um, I've taken on a new act, a wonderful female magician, Faye Presto. Oh yes. Yeah, I've taken Faye on now. So we're doing lovely things together with um, corporate and um, and cre- she's doing Crazy Cox, uh, <gasps> June 28th, sold out, sold Great. out. And um, talking of Crazy Cox, Max Fulham is there this coming Sunday. Yep. Um, and he's like literally six seats from selling out and also matt daniel baker who of course matt daniel baker my mind reader you had on your west end show that's right and matt is appearing at crazy cox in the west end in piccadilly on april 27th 9 15 seats are available so i'd love people to come along and see his show he's in as you know incredible and it's an amazing Sam, what are you up to oh what am i up to so um i've just had a photo shoot for some new pictures because we need to get some new headshots um i'm gearing up for my book launch that's exciting i've just filmed for um morning live so just a little vo for morning live um but yeah lots of nice little things happening always yeah. always always never a dull moment shall we say yeah. <laughs> thank, thank god is what i say well we're yeah. very privileged to have you guys as uh, on our show we just love having you here thank you and so thank much you. For and we will see you on monday who knows who'll be with us then <laughs> <laughs> take care Bye, Bye, darling. Bye. Bye.